Hey everybody, welcome back to Queensdale. Let's keep rising. Okay, so second round, my turn. I really want some clay so I can get a building built. So I think I'm going to spend one of the lumber I collected in the first round. And whenever you spend that, that means you can re-roll as many dice as you want. I'm happy with my actions. I want to get some clay. So I'm going to re-roll these three and hopefully... Boom! Two clay, exactly what I was looking for. Now, I could have kept doing that. On my turn, I do one core action, which is I spend a die. But in addition to that, I can do these little bonus actions of re-rolling or converting dice or using little assistance as many times as you want. So, if I wanted, to, if I didn't roll what I wanted, I could have spent and re-rolled some more. But I got the clay. I'm the first one out of the gate. Boom! Two clay! All righty. So, Jen's turn, and she's like, No! She thought... She had the clay in the bag, but I beat her to it. So now there's no reason to rush over there with her single clay. And is there anything else she wants to snag first? It's interesting. There is no bonus for being the first to get money. You always get one over there. And Jen's got two coin dice. She's got one last action. If she wants to pick up some more bread so that she can hire another assistant... Well, there's only one shot to do it. Also, bread, instead of being used with money to get assistance, bread can also be used to increase your morale, to climb up this track, to do production and score points. Yeah, I think Jen will. She'll just go on ahead and get some more bread. All righty. My turn. Now, I will get some more clay. Clay is uh, drying up. And now I've got what I need. Jen's turn. She'll go on ahead. Now, um, yeah, and she'll go ahead and grab the last clay. All right. My turn. And, ooh. Let's see. Let's go on ahead and do it. I think I've got what I need. I am going to be the first in this game to build something. You can see there's four opportunities to build. That's all. It's because it's what we're here to do. We're here to build up this Queensdale Valley into a thriving community around which the uh, castle lies. So I am going to build. At the beginning of the game, we've got these three selections of buildings we can choose from. Now, as you might imagine, over the course of the game, as we get into later chapters, there are going to be more and more and more buildings. Right now, we've got pink buildings that will do production, and we've got blue buildings which will let us store stuff at the end of the game to carry over into the next. Anything on the first row just costs us the resources, the, in this case, a lumber three stone and two clay. But if you want anything on the second row, it also costs two bucks. So like everything else, it's first come, first serve in this game. Although interestingly, in a two-player game, all there's only pretty much one of each type of building because all of these second copies that cost money are not available in a two-player game. So I am building first. I would like to make a production building. I will make a building that gives me... Let's see... Uh, you know, bread. Let's, let's go ahead and make a bakery. So, it's going to cost me three clay, two stone, and one lumber. And, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And, because I'm the first player to do it, no money. But now, remember, in a two- and three-player game, this one isn't available. If Jen ever wants to make a bakery, she has to take it off of this board, which costs the same resources, but also costs money. So... Everything is opportunity cost. This is a race game more than anything else, being the first to get access to the best stuff. So that's why I raced out of the gate to do it. I'm going to build this bakery, which I got to pop. Let's see if I can do it one-handed. I There we go. So it is gone. For the rest of the legacy of this game, I have this bakery. And if Jen ever wants to do it, she's got to pay more. So now remember, every time you build, you get two points. So I am one step closer to winning. Just eight more points to go. Woohoo! And I have to add this to my little burrow. You can see I've got three places that are ready to be constructed. And I take this little plunger, the coolest thing ever, use it to pull one of these out and put this in its place. Now, and, and this is basically just out of the game. Now, when I raise my morale, I will produce bread automatically. Bread plus money means assistance, which are bonus actions. Very powerful. Cool. All right. And I've scored two points. Yay. Jen's turn. Let's see. So she's still got some money. She, you know what? She's just going to get some money. Boom. And I'm just going to go ahead and get some lumber, but I'm the first one to do it. So boom, boom. And then Jen, she's going to get some more money. Boom. And then I, I've got about one more action. Now, this is an interesting thing. As you might have just guessed, a lot of times rounds can go very fast because you roll and, hey, this is a game where everybody's just going to grab a bunch of resources. Um, but sometimes big things happen. Uh, so that was like three turns in a row, just very, very fast. So I've got one more action. What do I want to do with it? 
Am I going to scout? Yeah, I'll scout, do a double space, and get to this other one. Mun two, and what did I find? A crown. That's my third of 10 points, baby. I am on my way to the top. Seven more points, and I win this thing. All right. So that was it. That was the second action. We're done. First player marker turns. You know, switches hands. Everybody rolls their bones. Easier said than done with one hand. All right. And this is going to determine what we get to do in the... Are we in the third round now? Yes, the third round. Okay. And wow, once again, Jen rolled no actions. And I only rolled one. Which is crazy because each one of these dice has a 33% chance of giving us an action. So, what's it going to be? This might be a very fast round of just gathering resources to build more stuff. So, I am first out of the gate. Now I can see Jen has clay and stone. I have clay and stone. So I have no clay now. So I'll be first to grab clay and get a double. And so now Jen can't get a double with this. Jen will be first out of the gate. Seeing how I have a bunch of stone, she'll be first out of the gate to grab the stone. And now I've got a problem. I've got three stone dice and there's only two spaces left to go. So one of these dice is useless to me unless I spend a stone to make it in action or I spend anything to re-roll it. All right. So, my turn again. Well, let's go ahead and grab some of that stone. And Jen's turn. You know what? She's going to grab some stone too. Oh my gosh, she's pushed me out. Um, yeah, I mean, these are not very many spaces. Okay. So now I've got two dice that I cannot use unless I pay to re-roll them or I pay to turn them into action dice. Wow. Okay. That uh, that's puts me in a bit of a pickle, doesn't it? You know what? I'm going to use my action. I'm going to do something else. I'm going to be the first to build an herb hut, which requires three lumber, which it just so happens I've got. So I will spend three lumber to build an herb hut. And I just uh, dropped it. All right, there we go. Now, this is going to let me pick up additional types of, uh, of herbs as I move around. And as I can see, I'm really close to a couple over here. So I think I'll learn how to pick up these types because then I can go one, two, three, four across the bridge into enemy territory and pick up these. All right. And remember, building an herb cut, that's one point. I'm at four of six and Jen hasn't scored anything yet. Woo. Okay. So it is Jen's turn now. She'll go on ahead and get a double lumber. So she's building up for a big payday. Uh, my turn. And now I hit this wall. What am I going to do? Do I want to re-roll these? But hey, I might just re-roll stone again. And, and remember, in a two-player game, there's only three stone spaces. So I've got some stone. I'll go on ahead and use this to turn one of these stone into an action. And I'll spend that bread I got a while ago plus a coin to get myself an assistant. Let's see what I get. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. And, okay, I've got a craftsman. Now, what they do is they are a two-resource discount. You just saw I had to pay full price when I built my first building and scored those two points. Now, for the next building I build, I get two discounts. So, basically, this is two resources for all intents and purposes. Although, I had to spend one stone to convert my die into a coin, etc., etc. All right. So, I've got that. I can use it later. All right. And if I never use it, remember, at the end of the game, I can convert anything... Uh, any of the basic resources or leftover helpers into, I can convert them four to one into money and I can store up to three money to carry into the next game. So that was that. Jen, she's still rocking it. She'll get some more clay. And now my other stone. Ugh, all right, well, I don't want to waste it. So I'll toss this stone to do another action. Um, hmm. So what am I going to do? I still have, you know what? Let's come over here. I'm, gonna, I'm spending a stone so that I can convert two coins into whatever I want. But I don't know what I want yet because I don't know what the dice are giving me. Oh, I don't want to do that action. I can't build. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to do this. Now that I built that herb shack, I'm going to go for a walkabout and go four spaces. And I'm going to go one, two. And hey, I picked this up. Three. I'm on the bridge. And now... This is a tricky thing. You would think you'd looking at this, you say, oh, well, then I can just go four right here like this. This is actually an FAQ on Board Game Geek that says, it's, uh, hopefully they fix this in the second printing. I've got the first printing. They really need to put a little arrow here and here. You cannot step sideways onto a bridge. So I can't go from here to here. I've got to come out and then I can go down. So anyway, so three, four. Now I'm in somebody else's territory. Next time I move, I can start picking up. And I can be picking up this and this over there, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway. So I've made a move for it, and let's see what I did find. 
I found some lumber. Okay, I'll take that. But not I would have liked a point or a morale boost or something like that, but I'll take some lumber. All right, so that was it. That was my last action, Jen's last action. She's got coins, so she could make this in action, or she could just collect some more coins. <sighs> Let's see. This is a race, though. Uh, what the heck? Jen will spend one coin to turn this into an action to build as well. All right. Because Jen certainly got what she needs. So she would have made a bakery if she could have. And she, I mean, she could go, she could still make a bakery, but she'd have to spend two extra coins to do it. She could make one of these storehouses, but hey, we're, we're not near the end of the game yet. No reason to worry about that. So does she want to make a treasurer, which generates money for her or a, a clay quarry, a woodcutter's hut? I think, I think, I think, I think Jen will go for the woodcutter's hut. All right. So we pop that out. And remember, like when I built, it costs three clay two stone, and one lumber. But no coins because of the one that Jen bought off of. Bippity bop. Ah! And bippity bippity bop. All right. So, and Jen will use the plunger, and she'll just put it over here. All righty. And where'd it go? So now, Jen. Now, both of us want to increase our morale because we will both produce resources for free. As you might imagine, if you get a whole bunch of production buildings, you really want to scream up this track. But if you don't have any production buildings, then chances are you don't care about morale and you want to pursue other um, avenues for victory points. But anyway, so now when Jen produces, she can get lumber. The more lumber she's got, the more quickly she can build herb shacks to make scouting a more viable path to victory for her. All right. So that was her turn. Oh, and by the way, she built, so she scored two points also. All right, and why is this here? Um, why? Oh, what the heck has happened here? Why am I way over here? Oh, I think I was doing that as an example. Yeah, because she's still way down here. Isn't that right? No, that's not right. She built... Oh, I've lost track. Yeah, yeah. No, that is right. Yeah, so she, uh, that's all she's done, I think. Oh, I'm losing track. As always, folks, watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on because when I get myself confused, Paulo is there to set me straight. Anyway, though, we'll, we'll say that's where I was. I think that's what she's... Because she just moved here and moved here. No, no. She must have come over here because she picked up that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And did she move one more space? I don't remember. We'll, we'll say that's where she ended up. Okay. But yeah, because she has picked up three things. So that was it for that round. Okay. Although... It's still Jen's turn. If she wants, now that she's got this production building, she could go on ahead and use her Glee Man. And what the heck? She will. She'll use him. And whenever you use a worker or an assistant, they come over here to the castle. They do not go back into the bag or the cup. They are out of the game. So that's one less Glee Man in the cup so we have a better idea of what we might draw in the future. Because if I recall correctly, I think there's eight gleemen, eight handymen, craftsmen, and two couriers, which are, our, which are the most powerful. You really want to draw a courier if you can. But anyway, so Jen's using her gleemen, which increases her morale by two, bip bop. And so that means she scored a point, and she has also produced another lumber. So now if she just gets one more lumber, she'll be able to build an herb shack, which is worth points and allows her to move around, etc. So that was that round, very quick. And once again, let's go on ahead and grab all these dice. And Jen, in the fourth round, will become the first player. Bippity, bippity, bippity. Out of the way, Stone. Bippity. Wah! All right. Oh, my gosh. Did, oh, here's oh, Jen had one more. Wow. Again, Jen has rolled no actions. This is crazy, yo. But I only rolled one. All right. And Jen is first out of the gate. If she wants to do an action, she's going to have to spend resources either to re-roll or to convert her dice. And she can see, okay, both of us can go for stone. Both of us can go for lumber. And so if she wants to get first dibs on the double stone or the double lumber, she should do it quickly, shouldn't she? And she is planning. Yeah, she'll go on ahead and get the double lumber. All righty. So now she's got more than she needs. And she could use this to convert that into that, or et cetera, et cetera. All right. So that was that. My turn. All righty. Well, I want to go ahead and grab the double stone before she does. Easy peasy. And now her turn. Let's see. And she has no more early access to stuff unless she wants to be the first out of the gate to do actions by converting dice. Although, man, she's almost got enough resources to build another building. She's got three stones. She's got four lumber and one clay. Now, these, these production buildings we've been doing so far, they require, you know, that. But uh, let's take a look at 
the storage buildings. Because at the end of the game, if Jen has these buildings, she can store these resources and carry them into the next game. Plus, she'll make points for building these. Plus, if she's the first to do them, they don't cost money. Or actually, in a two-player game, there's only these five storage buildings um, because there isn't another one where they cost money because these money ones are not available in two. So Jen just needs one more clay. Yeah, if one more clay, she could build one of these things. Interesting, interesting, interesting. But she has no clay. Now what she could do is she could say, turn this stone into here to turn two money into what she needs. And then, um, yeah, she could. It, you know, and this is a race. This is a game. I mean, if, if, you, if you don't spend it, you only get to carry a little bit of it over to the next game. So I think, yeah, Jen is going to race. Or she could wait and just gather more resources and go for a big turn later. I think, yeah, I think she will just go ahead and gather more resources. So she gets a stone. And I will get a it's a, a single lumber okay and Jen will get the last bit of stone and I'll go on ahead over here and get a coin no I won't I've got these coins yes I will yeah I'll, I'll get a coin there we go right and remember I effectively have two more resources for the purposes of building because I've got this craftsman so Jen she'll get a coin and I uh, will go on ahead and get some clay. A uh, double clay. Can't complain about that. And Jen's got... She, she'll get the last coin. So she did nothing but gather resources. This, So she is rich. She'll convert that into something good later. And me, I think I've got enough. Yeah, I'm going to come over and build once more. Because remember, I haven't produced yet. So if I have two production buildings, so much the better. Let's build another production building. Let's build one that gives me uh, clay. There we go. Boom. So I am building a clay quarry for myself, which again, it would cost me three clay, two stone, one lumber. So I actually have everything I need. But if I want, I can spend this guy so I can keep these things to build something else. But what the heck, I'll keep him. I might even carry him over to the next game. Although, wait, no. Uh, spoiler alert, there are buildings that let you carry workers over. Are they available? Yes, there are. Yeah. If I... Oh. If I build the dwelling, I can carry two of my little laborer guys into the next game. Maybe I want to build that instead of... No, because I haven't done production yet. I want to make another production building. So I'm just going to spend all this. I'm going to save my laborer for later. Boom. Boom. It's going to give me two points. I'm up to six of ten. I, and this, is, this is a quick half hour, 40 minute game. So what am I building? I am building... Oh, wait, I already have. Didn't I choose? Yes, I did. So I'm going to build this clay quarry. And once again... Pop. And there we go. Now, I really want to get my morale up so that these things will pay off. Definitely. All right. So that was my last action. Another round is over. We once again get our dice. I mean, this game is hyperspeed. Even when you get into later games, Jen and I found it was often the case that, you know, we'd roll the die, we'd see what everybody's doing, and we could just say, okay, you know, we're not really uh, competing for the same things. Let's just all just do whatever we want, and we could get through turns really quick. Oh, wow. Three actions for me. Three actions for Jen. Wowzy wow. Whoa, okay. And we're both competing for clay. I'm the only one getting lumber. Wow, okay. Well, I'm first out of the gate. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that double lumber. Because now I've got the three lumber to build another herb shack so I can be more effective at moving around. Okay, that's cool. So, and that was my first action. Jen's first action. Let's see. She is going to, unfortunately, get one step ahead of me and be the one to build an herb shack. Aye, 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 I can't do it this round. No. So she gets a point for that. And she's building her second herb shack. She wants to be able to... Right, so she can pick up these. So it makes sense to walk around. No, no, no. She's, she's good at picking up... All right, yeah, it's because she was heading towards that. Uh, see, this is really painful. This is where you think, oh, I come here and then here. But you can't. She'd have to go here and then here and then here. One, two, three, four. Uh, oh, she wants the lavender, though. Because she'd still really like to find the, um, the clairvoyant, which is, uh, which is out searching for lavender somewhere. So she could go one, two, three, four. But no, it makes more sense to go for that, just to try and get the, the most out of the move. Right? Because what's the other thing she can get? Right, she can get that. Because, there, yeah, there's no more of this in her area. So she's got to cross the bridge. All right, so that's it. So she's built a shack. She got a point. It's my turn. 
And I was going to build a shack so I could be better off moving. But now maybe I should go on ahead and move first ahead of her. But what can I get? Even though I can move four spaces, I can pick up this. That's one. So it'd be one, two, three, four. Oh, man. No, I should wait. I should wait till I get that herb shack. But now I got to wait till next round because Jen beat me to it. No, that's why I got the lumber. That's okay. I, there's other stuff to do. There's other stuff to do. Right. You know what? Let's get some bread. Let's get some sweet, tasty bread and get another helper. Okay. And Jen's turn. Speaking of bread, Jen's got some. She will go on ahead and spread a coin and some bread and get another helper. Let's see what we get this time. All righty. And boom. Folks, I'll admit, I cheated a little bit. I kind of peeked in so I could see because I wanted to show you what it's like. The, the courier is the rarest one. There's only two in the cup, but Jen found the courier. Hooray. So what happens when we draw the courier? Well, first of all, he's a wild card. He can stand in for other types. So this can be a gleeman to get Jen's morale up, or it can be a laborer to reduce the cost of building, which are the main ways to score points. But before that happens, we have a courier event. So what is the event going to be? We got a big old deck of cards. Every time you play, you shuffle this deck up. So you might see the same event several times in a row, or you might see new ones every time. In this game, we've got... All right. The name of the courier is Thilo. Thilo hadn't been seen for quite a while. That's true. Where has he been? He's been, he's been gone this whole game. It was rumored he was traveling on the king's orders. One morning, an unknown courier arrived and reported that Thilo had been successful at establishing trade agreements with the neighboring kingdom. He'd be away for some time, but had left messages at the bridges to make sure that noble families would profit as soon as possible from his dealings. You were advised to visit the bridges. All right. Put a courier token on each bridge. When a scout moves onto the bridge, the owner gets the courier token. Oh, two points, a morale, two bread, or two of any resource. And if any player in the game was the merchant family, remember how as part of setup, Jen's the artist, I'm the schemers, neither of us are the merchant. Whichever player is the merchant, you're the master of commerce. So you know how to profit even more from a deal. Uh, whenever you occupy one of these spaces, you get one additional. Three fame, two, oh, wow. But neither of, us, neither of us benefit from that. But there are opportunities for all the different family types to right. So we've got these little courier tokens. These get used for all kinds of stuff. This is a reminder that we want to cross these bridges. And I just walked across. I don't want to walk back across the bridge. Ah! But suddenly, suddenly, the scout is a very big deal. Okay. Whose turn was that? I think that was, yeah, that was Jen's turn. And hey, since that scout is such a big deal, I think I'll go on ahead and go for a four space walk. One, two, three, four. All righty. So, hey, I got this. I can get two points, two resources, one uh, morale, which would give me my first production, which would be a double production of bread and clay, or just two bread. It is a race, folks. I'm just going to take the two points. Boom, boom. I'm eight of ten. We're so close. And Jen's like, ah. Well, Jen will go on ahead and move two spaces, which means she'll go here. But she wanted before. She needed to go one, two, three, and then she'd four. She would have picked up two things. Ah! All right, it's not worth it. It's not worth it for only two. It's not worth it for only two. Jen will wait till next round because she'll be first next round and provide she gets an A. She'll be able to do this. She'll get a nice big bonus plus two things. So worry about that later. Okay. All right. Ah! Wow. All right. So as you can see, there's three more bridges to cross. So what is Jen going to do instead? Well, if she's not going to do that, is she going to build? She's got a lot of stone. Not much clay and not much, but she does have money. She can convert this money into the resources she needs to do another build. And now here's the thing. It's looking like I might be the winner of this game. I only need two more points. Now, it's not over. Jen, she could... Um, remember, Jen's got this, which is a Gleeman, which would let her immediately get another point over here. Or it's a Craftsman, which means she'd get a, a discount on building. So Jen could still catch up. But as soon as one player hits the target, that triggers the end of the game. Everybody else has until the end of the round to finish the game as well. And then there's some tiebreakers and stuff, depending on how many points people actually scored. But... Um, even if Jen doesn't make it to the 10, she wants to make it to 8 or 9 points. Because here's the trick. If Jen doesn't win, if I win and Jen doesn't win, but she's still down here in the low blue points, as a, as a consolation prize for losing, Jen will get one seal. Seals are the most valuable resource in the game because seals we can spend to upgrade our dice. These are sticker dice. The game comes with many, many stickers to put over all these dice. 
Let me just uh, give you a little sneak peek at them. And you can see they cost one, two, three, or four seals. So many different ways we can upgrade our dice over the course of this dice worker placement game. So the thing is, if I trigger the end of the game and Jen's in the blue, she gets one. If she makes it up to the red, even though she didn't hit her target, she'll get two seals, which will give her even more opportunities to upgrade her dice in the next game. So this is one of many cool catch-up mechanisms. If I win, hey, that's great. I'm the first to get to read this and trigger this. And I will upgrade my character because in the next game, my, the next time we play, my goal will be 16 points while everybody else's will still be 10. Um, I'll be the first to upgrade my tower and give myself a special power as well. But there are definitely benefits for not winning. Jedi, there have been times we have purposely thrown the game. You know, okay, I'm in it, I could win. But no, I really want to get a couple of seals because I've been saving up to buy this really cool die. There's a lot of really cool meta stuff that goes on in the decision making of this game. Wow. All right. So anyway, so that was uh, the big event and all of that. Right, right. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, because Jen went and got him and then I was the first to move. And so what is Jen thinking about what she's going to do now? Well, she needs to be thinking. Um, about, she definitely wants to get, and she just needs a few more resources. She needs some more clay, so she'll go out and get the double clay. And then she'll probably use this to get another building built, which will get her two more points. And then if she uh, uses this as a gleeman to do another thing, that'll get her one more point. So she's close to getting what she needs. Plus, if she can get across that bridge next round, if the game doesn't end, she could uh, get resources or what have you. But that two points I got for being the first cross the bridge, that was a game changer. But Jen's still, you know, she's still got to decide how she's going to go. Anyway, back to me. Oh, Jen took the double clay, so I only get a single clay. Jen says... I will, hmm. all right, so Jen has enough to build now. She will go on ahead and build, which is going to give her two points. And what is she going to build? It's going to cost her, ah, she, you know, the game's almost over. She is thinking maybe it'd be worthwhile to build a storage building. These are a little bit cheaper and it means she'll carry stuff into the next game and she'll still get her points. I think she likes that. I think Jen has a lot of stone. Jen is going to build a stone pile. All right. So that costs no coins, but it does cost two clay, three stone, and one lumber. And it says that on the, uh, on the board. All righty. Clay and stone go back home. All right. So need the plunger again. So boop, she'll put uh, this new uh, stone hut next to her farm. So this is where she stores all of her stuff from game to game. So now, before the game is over, Jen wants to get a whole bunch of stone in her possession. So she'll start the next game with all that stone and that'll give her a huge boost right out of the gate. Cool. And Jen will, oh, she could have used this as a discount, but instead Jen will use this as a gleeman to uh, get two more to go boop, boop. And that gave her one point and she produced, which gave her one lumber. All right, so Jen just needs one more point. Even if she loses, she doesn't mind because that'll give her two seals and she will be so much more powerful. Jen might want to spend the rest of this game just setting up for the next game rather than going for the win. Um, although, you know, she could still get across that bridge. She could still pull it off. Meanwhile, I've got one action to do. What the heck? Let's get another helper man. I will spend a bread and a coin. And... Come here, helper man or lady. It's a gleeman. Oh my. It's a gleeman. It's a gleeman. If I spend this gleeman right now to increase two, boom, boom. I just increased my morale. Boom, I'm only one point away. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. I just need one point and that triggers the end of the game. And now Jen, time's up. Should she get a coin or should she spend a coin to make this an action? Or should she re-roll it? Remember, she gets to store three coins, and she gets to store three stone. So if, if the game ended right now, she would waste these resources. And what else is she going to do? How is she going to get that last point? She needs to get one more point to make sure she gets double seals. She could build, um, she needs three lumber to build another hut, or uh, she needs another gleeman to get more morale. Or, yeah, no, if she, remember, if Jen crosses the bridge, she can get one morale. 
She could get two bread. She could get two resources. I think it's a build is what she's going to go for. Wow, that's interesting. But then if she builds, she won't have enough stuff to carry over to the next game. But Jen definitely wants to get one. I mean, she could just get the two stones she wants to carry by walking on the bridge. There's a lot of options. But the game is fast coming to a close. And I think I'm going to stop right there, folks, because that should give you a pretty good idea of what the rise of Queensdale is all about. Now, if you want to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that I in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.